have. Let me put this up here. Well, it's getting there slowly but surely. Okay, audio test for Twitch. We're good. Okay. Okay, let me just tell this person. Okay, 275. Okay. <clears throat> you ready? Yep. Okay. Three. Oh, hold on. Okay, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 275 of the Security Podcast here on the M30 Network. My name is Haim, and Tom is there. Straight Hi. out of me. He's there. Yes. It's been a while, but things change, and life happens, and, and we have all the good stuff. The best way to get your daily dose of, of security in 30, or just in general, is to join our signal group. We just message us. Um, you can find us on YouTube. Put a comment there. Find me at Heim Time at uh, on Twitter or at In Thirty on also on Twitter. We will get you in. That is the best way to keep up with us. You have a real question. We have real answers. You have fake questions. We can give you a fake answer. Okay. Again, we know we, we can do that. So we just. It's been a while. We had a topic and then we lost the topic. And then we were going to talk about it just a little today. And we want to first start off with CSAN. Um, Apple, Friday of DEF CON, and we're going to keep this short, but Apple, Friday of DEF CON, when all the security people are, are at DEF CON, announced that they're going to do some weird, some CSAM thing with their phones and on device and with iCloud. So first off, CSAM, child, stands for child safety, a child sexual abuse material, essentially child pornography. Well, that's what it is, but they want to, they, they don't want to say that. So CSAM, they want to protect children. Again, this is all about the children. Always all about the children. Everything we do is about the children. Okay. And so they had this idea. The problem is when they first put it out, it seemed like they didn't ask anybody if this was a good idea. They just said, hey, we're going to protect children. Who, If you don't want to protect the children, you must hate children. No, no, no. That's not what happened. Okay, and then over the coming weeks, they had a lot more FAQs, and they they tweaked some things, they explained things that I thought was getting it a little bit better, and Tom's going to tell me that I'm wrong. And then finally, last week, they just shut the whole thing down. So in the span of three weeks, they went from this big to-do to shutting it all down. So I'm going to let Tom fill in some gaps. Yeah, so uh, you're, you're exactly right. Um... When when a company tries to put out stuff like this and they take the save the children angle, uh, it's it, it can whip the media into a frenzy when you say, whoa, hold on, why are we doing this? That's a bad idea. Or there are technical deficiencies with your approach. Because it sounds like what you're saying is, I hate children. And that's, that's clearly not the case. We just want to make sure that there's not overreach or uh you know that the solution isn't going to be rife for abuse uh which it turns out that yeah it can be um so let's let's get into the the technical details of what apple wanted to do. now a lot of platforms i would say the majority of large platforms out there do enable content scanning of some kind right um, there, there are some places that just don't allow nudity and they scan for that using AI or known images or just human moderators that go in and flag things or they rely on user flags, right? Facebook has blocked nudity basically forever since the platform exists. Um, but for these images, there's actually a, uh, a government database or several government databases that have known hashes of these illegal images. Um, which, you know, no one is advocating for uh, the, <laughs> the spread of these images at all. Um, but you have to understand that when these hashes are mashed, it usually kickstarts 
a giant process, including um, law enforcement getting involved to trace down, okay, who uploaded this? We know about this abuse imagery because it was in the database already, right? Why did they upload it? We have to go investigate them. We have to, you know, basically take them out of the internet uh, and, you know, possibly uh, throw them in jail. Uh, if, at the very least, take them to court. Um, so the issue with these systems is that they're fuzzy, right? And they are rife for potential abuse, right? The, the images, the hashes known in the government databases, they are proven to be illegal images. Um, and it's, it's a good thing these databases exist. But the thing that Apple was trying to do is they were trying to do basically fuzzy matching on these things. So if you think about traditional hashing, right? You have an input and you get an output. And if the input changes, the output changes. Well, unfortunately, when it comes to these abuse images, somebody can alter just one pixel of the image and then it evades your known hash, right? Uh, so there are hash techniques out there that basically are fuzzy. They can take a, a little bit of, um, of manipulation before the hash will actually change. Uh, and that value can, you know, you can tweak the algorithm to be as little change or as much change as you want. Um, the issue with what Apple implemented is that it was really fuzzy. Uh, so much so that, you know, basically within a couple weeks, and, and frankly, the reason we didn't do any reporting on this is because the story kept evolving at such a rapid clip. If we would have reported on the, the first thing we saw about this, the next, the very next week, the very next week's episode would have been completely invalidated or there would be brand new stuff to talk about. So we wanted to get all of our facts straight. And now that Apple has uh, indefinitely delayed the program, they will probably bring it back. But now that they've indefinitely delayed it, uh, now we can talk about it because things have kind of settled. Um, but basically within a matter of weeks, uh, the internet at large security researchers went out and tried to crack these hashes. Basically tried to figure out not only, you know, uh, is this efficient? Is this effective at catching abuse imagery? Um, does it actually protect the children? Does it catch the right kinds of people? Or is it fuzzy enough that you can weaponize the internet at large to get people attention from law enforcement that you don't like? And uh, yeah, it turns out the latter. Uh, so there are actually uh, websites out there and projects that are specifically designed on the internet to create images that match things in this abuse image database that are just like cat pictures or just pictures of text. Like they're, they're not abuse pictures at all. So uh, there are websites and projects and scripts out there now that will alter a, a picture of an adorable kitten in a way that the hash when run through Apple's system will match known abusive content. Uh, which means that if really you want to uh, you want to get somebody in trouble. You want to you know uh, essentially swat them. Um, you can download one of these cat images, send it to them. They look at it on their iPhone. Maybe they save it. Maybe it's an adorable cat picture that they want to show somebody. Um, and then Apple scanning will pick that up and alert law enforcement to their current location. Um, it's what Apple was trying to do. Right, the the original objective is a good thing. How they were doing it was not a good thing. And the rapid push without involving the security community to kind of hammer on this thing really was kind of the final nail in the coffin and why everybody went nuts, right? Um, uh, like I said before, a lot of these large-scale image hosting services and cloud providers already scan for this kind of content, but it's on networks that they own. The thing that differentiates what Apple was trying to do is it does it on your local device without anything being uploaded. They, they were planning on pushing this out with the, uh, the latest iOS update um, to scan for this content just on your phone. If you have one of those files, if it's in your photo library, it's going to flag you. Which means that uh, if, if Heim sent me a, a funny cat picture that happened to match one of those hashes, yeah. if, if he secretly hates me, then yeah, I'm going to get a knock at my door from the cops and they're going to take all of the tech I have in my house to go search for abuse in it. Um, it's they're going to take your monitor. They're going to take your <laughs> monitor and search the monitor. Because yes. I love when they do that. I, no, it's look, basically, it's, it's, it's weaponizing it, against people. Look, it, it's, 
so there, there's a couple of things. So from the purely security point of view, that's the one thing. Um, as a school teacher, we actually deal with this a lot because if you're in high school, two, two boyfriend, girlfriend, or whomever, partner and other partner, send each other uh, risque photos or nude photos, they're both under 18. That is considered That is considered child pornography. I mean, we have this problem. And in the eyes of the law, it doesn't matter. So if you take it and send it to your friend, okay, that is a bad that is bad and you are sending it and everything else. And we and, and we understand the letter of the law versus the spirit of the law and all that other stuff. But this happens. So we have a push cam campaign to be like, um, don't sext each other, don't don't send photos that you don't want. But they do get out. It's this abstinence-only type of education. We know this happens. It happens. We get that. So how do you prevent it? And then we can talk about revenge revenge porn, where you send photos to your, your partner, and then you break up, and then they post it or blackmail you and everything else. And Facebook had some weird thing where if you send us your bad photos, we will add this to our hash, which... Um, that's on you. You you make your decision. Luckily, I am too old for all of this. I I was married. I I was married before all of this became a thing. So so I am lucky. But I was talking to some people now who are single, who are younger, and apparently, uh, all of this is a huge problem, and it's a huge deal, and. And it's one of those things that, that they're working on. Apple is trying to protect children. That was the goal. The goal is they want to prevent they want to protect children by say by alerting the parents. So if you're a six if you're 16 years old and you get a photo that's that's questionable, it will message your parents and say, Hey, we have this photo, what do you want to do with it? That's a little that's a little creepy, but Again, I don't have a 16-year-old, so I, I couldn't answer that. Then you have the other part of what we're discussing that it uploads it and you can and it doesn't do it, it does it locally on your phone and through iCloud and, and it does the neural hash that's not exact. And what about the false positives? You're you're taking a photo to send to the doctor, what and that happens. Like my question to somebody, and I know the answer to this, is if you take a photo of your kid in the bathtub. My my two year old, my one year old, my infant, because it's a cute picture, is that bad? And the answer to all this is intent. So what they're saying is they're gonna they're gonna scan it. There's a seven. There's a number strike policy. It's not one. It's not two. But it's not a hundred thousand. There's a strike policy. And if you hit that threshold, then it goes to a human. So now a human is able to look at your iCloud photos, which they said well was encrypted, but now they can decrypt it. And it's weird like that. But the good news is, is that they can't, they table this aside. So we don't really have to get into the nitty gritty and we don't have to really do our homework. But as Tom pointed out before, it's that that's what it is. It's this slippery slope of protecting kids, but also allowing, I guess, freedom and, and not having bad things. So, And, and keep in mind Udo, that yeah. once this technology exists, um, it's not a far leap to introduce other hash databases, right? So if you, if you start with child abuse imagery as a hash database, well, if the government says, hey, we, we want to make sure that images of like a Hong Kong freedom protest. We, we don't want those images on people's phone, or we want to be alerted when those things happen. Or um, maybe it's uh, maybe secret NSA files, right? If, if those are on, on a device, well, we certainly don't want those to leak. But what about pirated music? Maybe pirated music from iTunes. That would, that would be truly horrible. Well, I mean, why stop there? Let's do movies and TV shows too, and video games. While we're sure, let's let's just get everything. Um, and it's that kind of fear, especially because Apple does, you know, necessarily if they want to do business in a the country, they have to work with the local government. Um, some of these local governments aren't super friendly, right? If if we want to take, um, I know we don't get political on this show, but right, being homosexual in Russia is extremely dangerous. What if the Russian government said, "Hey, you want to sell iPhones here?" You can't allow homosexual anything on your phone. And here's a list of hashes that we would like, you know, IP addresses, names, usernames, and GPS coordinates for. That's horrifying. But that's also a potential reality and a potential consequence of this technology.
Um, and unfortunately, once this kind of tech is out of the bag and available, it's very hard to put that genie back. And so, and that's unfortunately the the problem. We're trying to solve something important. Uh, revenge porn, ex exploitation of children, all that stuff. But I think it has to be bigger than than one company just sitting there in the dark and and making this. I think it needs to it needs to come with significant money and significant research and to and to put. I don't want to say do it right, but just do something better than every company doing it. Give kudos to Facebook. I mean, there is no adult content on Facebook. I mean, there isn't. Even Twitter, there well. Twitter has a lot more, but in general, Facebook has no adult content, and people say, well, they have they censor a lot. Well, there's no adult content on Facebook. I mean, it's one of those things, go somewhere else. And and anyway, let's I, I want to move on from there because we're getting too long on that. Um, you want to talk about Proton Mail or you want to talk about WhatsApp? Uh let's do let's do WhatsApp. This is this is short, it's sweet, uh -huh. it's to the point. ProPublica put out an article that says end-to-end -end encryption means nothing in WhatsApp, and they're all reading your messages all the time because they have moderators. We found thousands of people hired through Accenture, the contracting firm, for WhatsApp moderation. All right, let's clear this up. End-to-end -end encryption does not prevent people from taking screenshots, forwarding messages, turning their phone and showing it to somebody. Look at what's on the screen, it's got stuff on it. Um, and then encryption doesn't help this thing. So WhatsApp does have moderation features. You are able to report messages as spam or abuse or harassment, etc. cetera. Um, and what happens to those messages, right? Does Facebook just take your word for it? No, of course not. That could be abused, right? If I just really don't like somebody and I report all their messages and have Facebook kick them off the platform, right? That's, that's not great. That's not a good answer for anyone. Um, so when you report a message, Facebook will take that message and a couple previous messages, package them up, and forward that message to the WhatsApp moderation team. It's quite literally like if you took a screenshot and sent it to Facebook, but it happens on the back end and it's, it's verified, like there's, there's no room for you to kind of fake that data. Um, it doesn't mean end-to-end -end encryption is broken. It just means that if somebody reports your message, yeah, of course Facebook can read it because it forwards the message to Facebook. That's it. Everyone went kind of up in arms about this, screaming about, oh, look, it's the evils of WhatsApp and Facebook. And okay, look, there's a lot of evil about WhatsApp and Facebook. There's plenty out there that's already proven. We don't need to make stuff up. WhatsApp is end-to-end -end encrypted in yeah, if somebody reports your message, it's going to forward over to Facebook. That shouldn't be surprising. Let, let's go on a limb, and I don't want to say this, but if you take screenshots of Signal and forward it to law enforcement, it's the exact same thing. Literally it, the it, same thing. It, it, it's, I mean, I mean, Signal has, on uh, as a setting for your local device, uh, don't allow screenshots. But that doesn't stop the other person from not having screenshots or whatever it is. So it's it's just end-to-end -end encryption is just the transit mechanism. When it's at rest, you're trusting the other person to not go and do everything else. So what's we've been saying this. The reason we move from from WhatsApp to Signal is because we figured out how to do groups properly. WhatsApp, I mean, yes, they're owned by Facebook, but the actual messages inside are not bad. What WhatsApp is doing is they're using all the people, all the metadata, which creeps us out. Um, and and with that said, who cares what the content is if they know if they can get all the metadata outside of it? I mean, for our security group, we want to be as most secure as possible. But in reality, if more people were using WhatsApp, we if it wasn't that hard to switch back and forth, we would we would go back. But if we don't have to use WhatsApp, we don't want to. If I if I can stick with iMessage and encrypted text message and uh, and Signal, I'd rather do that. Again, yeah. Apple has the same mechanism, except Apple holds the keys. So if law enforcement asks, Apple can decrypt the messages. But it's not as it's it's just as simple as you forwarding your iMessages to people. Forwarding messages is the weakest link. So yep. 
I've, I've seen plenty an, of, it's, of it's, screenshots uh, on, on social media of funny WhatsApp conversations. That's no longer end-to-end -end encrypted there, bud. Like, it, I mean, it was in transit, but guess what? Everybody can read it because you posted it on Reddit. Like, why is everybody surprised? It's one of those things, now I'm going to hear at Thanksgiving and, and on the holidays, uh, WhatsApp is, in, is broken. No, now this, now this misinformation is going on and on and on. Okay? There are other things to yell at WhatsApp about. Okay? It's, not, it's not any more broken than what it was. They're changing their privacy policy for businesses that, doesn't, that don't really affect you unless you know what I'm talking about. You can still forward messages. Here's the thing. Most people, every couple months, WhatsApp says, hey, do you want to back up your messages? And everyone says, yeah, I'll back up to, uh, to, to uh, Google Drive if you have Android. Well, guess what? It's now Google has your messages. Yep. If you back up to iCloud, now Apple has it. I mean, you're ruining the encryption there. So you have to trust the other person to not do it. And if you're in a group message setting, okay, and then while we're on the message talking about WhatsApp, I want to remind everyone, Telegram is not secure. Why is it not secure? Okay, the, the Telegram groups, group messages are not secure by design. Telegram one-on-one -on -one is whatever they claim to be secure. And to date, nobody has formally cracked it. But I'm sure there's a lot of zero days on a crack that they want to keep under wraps because they don't want people to know that it's cracked because the prize is not worth the money when they have billion users that they can uh, the spy on. So Telegram, not secure, okay? Really not secure. WhatsApp is end-to-end -end encrypted unless you do something boneheaded like take screenshots and forward it to people or report it. Because again, we have to try to keep people safe. Anything else? Yeah, and the... the you know, the downside of if the argument of why even have a report functionality, right? Why why even introduce this to give people the option of, of skipping end to end encryption? Well I, I just I have one question to ask you, and it's have you thought about your car's extended warranty recently? <laughs> right? Like if, if we had no ability to report spammers and to kick people off the platform. That's going to be the reality of WhatsApp, is you getting a bazillion messages exactly like that. So we do have to have some amount of control. The way Signal handles this is, by default, the option is, hey, unless that person's in your, your address book, we're just not going to give you the message, right? Your client's going to get it. It's going to be like, oh, do I, do I know this person? Nope. And it's going to throw it away. That's another way to do this. Yeah, so... Again, it's, it's you have to make trade-offs. WhatsApp made their trade-off. Signal makes theirs. All right. And again, we talk about using Signal. Signal is not that hard, easy to use. With that said, is if you change phones a lot or SIM cards, Signal breaks a lot. So it is one of those things you have to know what you're doing. It's not hard. They made it as easy as can be. But you're in charge, and being in charge means you can screw up. And Signal says, if you screw up, don't come to us because we can't help you. All right, let's move on to our last story. And I think this is the, the, the one that we should be the most outraged about, but not really because email is not secure anyway. Is ProtonMail change your privacy policy because they got caught sending logs to, I think it's uh, uh, Swiss authorities. But we know that. So ProtonMail got in trouble or somebody found out through whatever the open uh, FOIA request for the Swiss are. <laughs> They had a transparency report and said, yes, if the authorities ask us, we have to comply with Swiss law. Like, we have to comply. Just like in America, you have to comply with the law. So Interpol asked that the Swiss are, and they pushed back. They did push back. But at the end of the day, emails were given to the local authorities, which resulted, I think, in an arrest. So they changed from their privacy policy. We do not keep IP logs. And now that begs the question, is ProtonMail secure? And I don't think that's the right question. I think all email is now insecure. It's just not worth it. And if you're going to send messages, just use Signal over email. Just don't use email. It doesn't matter. When I told people that... that yeah. When, when I told people that um, 
I was I was moving away from Gmail and I was just gonna you know run email under my own domain, not physically run a mail server because that's honestly more work than I want to deal with on a daily basis. Um, but I went to Fastmail, right? I have some friends using Fastmail. They recommended it. Fastmail works fine. They also don't make any ridiculous security guarantees, right? They, they say, yeah, sure, we have two-factor authentication. Cool, good enough. Um, but at the end of the day, it's email, and email is going to be insecure. I had some people ask, well, why not Proton Mail? Why not this other provider over here that offers encrypted email by default, and it's super secure? You have to remember that email is a giant federated network, and for Proton to email Gmail, it can't do so in this secret convoluted encryption thing that only Proton Mail knows about, because at the end of the day, when you're receiving or sending emails to other things that don't have those protocols, it's just plain text email. Like, that's it. Email will be unencrypted because it's always been unencrypted, and forcing everybody to move to a new system is going to break everything, so people threw their hands up and said, why bother? We have better things to do with our time. Um, which, honestly, I hate to say it this way, but it's kind of the right answer, right? It's also why PGP never really took off. Um, so, ProtonMail also made a, a lot of marketing stink about how, oh, we don't keep IP addresses, we don't keep logs, we don't, we don't do any of this stuff, all of our mail is super encrypted. Yeah, sure, it might be encrypted ProtonMail user to ProtonMail user, but that's like less than 1% of the email that I'm ever going to send is to another ProtonMail user, right? No one uses it. The personal emails I send are going to Gmail, Yahoo, and... AOL, unfortunately. I haven't converted those people. Um, but what happened here is that there was a climate activist that the authorities were interested in, and through a, a serious uh, crimes loophole in Swiss law, um, they were able to ask ProtonMail to start keeping logs for a particular account. Um, and so ProtonMail had to comply. They're, they're a Swiss company. Uh, and so they started keeping logs and ended up giving uh, the authorities, you know, basically access to uh, emails, um, to IP addresses, to the devices used. And they uh, they decided to take um, to take their little their little marketing slogan of, hey, we don't keep your your logs. Uh, we don't keep any IP logs. Um, yeah, they removed that statement because clearly. Uh, they can be compelled to keep IP logs. Uh, this is this is another one of those things that has bitten people where a company decides that security is in vogue and they can make a lot of money if they market themselves right. Um, also, see literally any and almost all VPN companies out there, right? Super easy to start a VPN company. I can give you an Ansible playbook and like a couple servers and you can have a VPN company up in minutes. Um, the hard part is marketing yourself and getting people to switch to your platform. Um, that in, you know, shaking hands with all the YouTubers who are going to run ads and podcasters who need to run ads for your service. But um, when you have more marketing than actual security talent or actual security value, people are going to put their trust in you and they're going to get bit. Eventually, things will fall over eventually you will get find out, uh, found out and eventually enough users will be hurt publicly enough that your company will cease to exist. I'm not sure that's going to happen in ProtonMail's case, but they really don't look good. My problem is, and we've said this on the show many, many times, um, like you said, it, it's federated how much, how, unless it's PGP, and PGP is not broken, but it's old now. So people just take an archive of it, and 10, 15 years later, as as it gets more powerful, the computers, they'll just crack it. So you want that perfect forward secrecy and everything else. And like you said, who's using ProtonMail? Everyone's using Gmail. Everyone's using Yahoo Mail. And you said there are people using their local uh, ISP or whatever it is. But it's email. Okay. And I, 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 I've said this before. How many, and I've posted this in our signal group, how many, you, how many emails a day do you get from somebody you know? My email inbox is newsletters, um, uh, catalogs, spam, bills, bill alerts, 
everything that's coming from a machine. It's literally machines emailing me. Okay, I don't need Proton Mail on my newsletters. I don't need Proton Mail on my American Express card. I, I just, or my Amazon order, or my Target order, my Walmart order. Okay, so if I need to send somebody a thing, I pull out my phone and I send them a message. Okay, I think we got beyond the email. And if you're doing it for a company, there's retention policies and, and other compliance issues. So who are, you, who are we sending email to? And then people say, well, I have everything funneled through email. And I, and I go, why? Why do you need everything funneled through email? So I thought of another idea, and I, and I, and I was helping my mother with this. You know what? You're, you'll feel a lot better. Just delete all your email. Like literally, like all your newsletters. I asked somebody, did it, they said they saved like, like eight gigs of email space in Gmail by searching for the gap. By the way, if you didn't know, the gap sends uh, two emails a day. Two email news. And what do you do? You archive it or you just leave it in your box? No, spend an afternoon going through it. First, you'll save a ton of stuff, but you don't need it. Like, trust me, you don't need it. And it will, if anybody does send that archive out, guess what? They will, now they will have that archive. By having the least amount of mail that you actually need, you're saving space and you're not creating that paper trail. But again, okay, so Proton Mail is encrypted. Encrypted to whom? Like the other Proton Mail? Like who really cares? Who, if you're hiding, if you're trying to do something and you're hiding, you're going to use Signal, you're going to use something else. So, I mean. If you're trying to I be just completely want, secure, <laughs> you're not going to use email. And, and you shouldn't, really. Like you said, I was, I was thinking about moving off Gmail specifically, but it's Google Calendar that I really need. Um, that's the hard one to get people off of. But, I mean, recently I've been on my Mac using um, the Mail app and Calendar through CalDAV. And you know what? I got to give Google something, but again, it's newsletters. I mean, it's newsletters. We, we know that. Uh, they're, they see the orders like, I, okay, my Amazon orders. Okay, I, I guess it's, I don't care that much. But start asking yourself, what am I using email for? And if the answer is newsletters and stuff, start going through it, deleting stuff, unsubscribing. That unsubscribe button is really good. Uh, and in probably an afternoon, you can reduce your email load probably 90%. And then you can ask yourself, how am I using email from there? Um, I don't know. I mean, this is one of those weird stories that Proton Mail got caught, but everyone who knows about security is not using uh, Proton Mail for its encryption, I guess, right? It's, I got nothing really else to say about it. Yeah, Proton Mail's biggest strength was their marketing. And I don't see that changing. And the story didn't change my opinion at all about Proton Man, right? Um, it, if you just think about the use cases, you think about what they can and can't do with a federated protocol, real quickly you understand that Proton Mail wasn't really secure. They were just good at acting secure. And that's, that's yeah, it. Like that's all said. I got. You're using Fastmail, but you're using Fastmail just to not use Google. I mean, I think that's why you're doing it. You're paying yeah, to I, really not use Google. I, I, needed, I needed a mail host that accepted custom domains and had the ability for me to generate user aliases because if I want to sign up for some stupid, sketchy website that I know is going to spam me, I want the ability to generate a random email address and trash it the moment I don't need it. Um, and Fast mail works great, and I've got stuff at my domains, and I pay them for the privilege. That's the other thing I wanted, is I didn't want a free mail host. I wanted to say, here's a pile of money, give me a service. I don't want ads, I don't want you to sell my information, I just want to hand you dollar bills, and you give me a service. And they've done that wonderfully. I have no complaints there. This is not an ad, I'm just happy with it. I mean, the other thing is I, I would beg to the question, how many email addresses of people do you actually know? Usually the first thing you do is you message them and say, what's your email? I have to send you something. Agreed. And I would, so again, I, I, I don't mean to be like, I, I just want to be a little realistic here. So, okay. So we covered three stories. And oh, I wanted to agree with the whole VPN thing. 
Um, everyone asks us in the, in our signal group, what VPN do you use? And we don't answer. Literally, we don't have, we don't want to recommend any single one because it's all marketing. And um, we don't, I, and we say, you have to do your research. And well, how do you do that? We can recommend you the links, but guess what? It's, 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 it's secure until it's not secure. And I, what I we tell you now to... may not be secure tomorrow. I used to recommend, uh, or, or at least tell people the VPNs um, that I had used in the past, until one by one they fell like dominoes with their, oh, hey, we don't log anything, we don't keep anything, oh, this user of this service totally got blasted for torrenting movies, and oh, hey, this thing that said they didn't log actually got raided by local authorities, and it turns out they log everything. Oh, and these guys? They use the same password. It's just like root and password for all of their servers. So you might not want to use that one. Uh, so, yeah, I don't recommend anyone at all. I mean, I just have my own and I just run everything through my house. Same. Um, because the goal, the goal is privacy on my end. I'm not trying to do anything illegal. I'm just trying not, my. I'm just trying for the public Wi-Fi not to see what I'm doing. Anyway, with that said, we are way over time. Okay, so with that said, of uh, I don't know when we'll see you next. It's probably not next week. It'll probably be the week after. But join our single group. Message us. We'll get you in. With that said, everyone have a good night, and we will see you probably in two weeks. Bye, everybody. See you, everyone. And right, stop.